Good morning, USA, and welcome to another episode of the Bernie or Bus Show. Unshaved, unbathed, unedited, and unscripted. Let's jump right in here. We've got a battle, and it is getting intense. We've seen this going already, and there are two ways to frame this battle. The DNC and its operatives, the think tank people, David Brock, John Cowan, the talent agency execs and all of these people that are are thinking of ways to to uh, get the blue team in front of the red team what they what they are trying to how they are trying to frame it is that we've got um, Bernie bros who are just raging and unreasonable and the way other people are tr trying to frame it is that we've got class warfare Thomas Piketty and others are trying to show us that poor and poorly educated people who normally in, in past centuries would have voted left for leftist parties are, have now been um, commandeered by the right parties, been taught to hate each other, been taught to hate other people um, that they can think about as other others, minorities and others, um, xenophobia and so forth. So we've got two ways to frame the argument, and the battle will be won or lost by which framing model wins. Joy Reid is an example of the DNC way to frame it, the Bernie Bros astroturfing narrative. I truly don't understand how his supporters don't see that the raging and social media trolling is one big reason he can't grow his base. Wow. He can grow his base. He, he is growing his base. And... The other part of this narrative is to try to make it look like there are just a few of us. But if you look at the pictures of Bernie's rallies, it's not just a few people. And these aren't just nasty troll people. These are people who may be down on their luck, who may be um, thrown under the bus by the kind of economy that's rigged to send all of the money up. You've got poor and poorly educated people mixed with college age people who, who can't get a job with their college degrees, who are in debt. You've got some highly educated people who also are, are desperate from a financial standpoint. You've got all those people sounding like they're mad. Yeah, they're, they're mad, but we, we get thrown under this um, stereotype, this Bernie Bros narrative, and it's it's not white males, it's, it's people of every walk of life who just can't continue living under neoliberalism. So there's uh, Joy's way is one way. Here's an antidote to that way of thinking. You can jump into Fiorella Isabel anywhere in this narrative. I'll put it up on my... Well, sometimes she rambles a little bit, always she's on, and then she comes right back to the real issues, which is that working people, working class people cannot continue to live under neoliberalism. A lot of us were asleep. I voted for Obama. I, I thought Obama was going to bring me hope and change and, and all of this bullshit that ended up not being true. So I'm not blaming people for, for not talking about it then. I am saying you cannot ignore that Donald Trump is a symptom of this problem. And you cannot use that to, to vote shame people because they believe that this is it. And th that brings... Vote shaming, something Jimmy Dore has talked about. He calls it democracy shaming. This is the vote blue no matter who uh, idea that, that if you vote for anyone other than a Democrat, then, then you're a bad person. Brings me to another point, okay? We can talk about what Obama has done. We can also talk about what the neoliberal and the neocons have been doing since Reagan and even before that. Right. The regime change wars that we have engaged in. And then after the regime change wars, um, we, we enacted neoliberal policies like the crime bill. Joe Biden. Joe Biden did that. You expect me to vote for the guy who wrote the crime bill? Are you freaking kidding me? And and then to vote shame people for saying no. Enough is enough. Our planet is dying. People are in this. 
that's that's a good snippet. But all of this is good. I, I urge you to go back. The other part of the problem, and and so a middle-aged white guy has to be on his toes here, but Joy and Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, um, John Lewis, other people who are are connected to the machine, to the to the neoliberal machine, who are minority status. You've got a lot of strong leaders, neoliberal leaders of color, and and gay people and other people who are who have traditionally been disenfranchised but are not now and so they get through the door and then they they want to close the door on everybody else who still needs to get through tim black is really good at unpacking this stuff and so i urge you keep up with his youtube channel i i'm a paid subscriber to his channel i i just think the world of him and he is so able to call out the the black leaders and the brown leaders of of um, who are on the wrong side here of the of this battle. Let me give you a little snippet of of another thinker on this. The issue of the Democratic Party and what they do with identity politics, and how s some people on the left seem to be using that to, in some ways, I don't know if they're consciously doing it or it's sort of an unconscious thing, but it, it ends up dumping on minority groups. But anyway, um, the Dem Democratic Party, um, often, w in anybody who's aware of how they really function, I'm not talking about clueless celebrities that think everything the Democratic Party does is great and that vote blue no matter who and all that sort of thing. Anybody pays real attention and, and does any research into what the Democratic Party does and those uh, oligarchs that are in the Democratic Party and people like Hillary Clinton and, and Nancy Pelosi and all of that know that these people are totally on board with war. They really don't care about black people whatsoever. They don't care about indigenous people. They care about lining their pockets and um, uh, with lobbyist money from Big Pharma and help the health insurance industry and the weapons industry and so forth. So anybody who's got a clue about the U.S. Democratic Party probably knows that, and actually if they do any research into them, they're as big on war as, as the GOP. They just... So there, that's the real truth. We're not going to solve this problem by voting blue. We're only going to solve this problem by voting true progressive. The... The poor and poorly educated people in past centuries would have voted uh, for a left party to fix it. But now it's so confusing because the right party has has co-opted the the working class people. And so we there everyone is confused about which side should they be on. The way to sort out this mess, the way to to know what to say to joy if you go on Twitter or other people who are are coming at this from the neoliberal side is say it isn't red versus blue it isn't democrats versus republicans it's the wealthy few versus the rest of us and if we can win this battle and how the argument is framed and if we can keep patiently and politely explaining that the bernie bros narrative is bunk we don't we don't need to to accept that we we need to keep challenging that and we need to keep bringing the argument back away from the shiny objects back to class struggle. And that's what this whole argument is about. That's what this whole election is about. That's what this moment in history is about. If we don't figure this out, we may not have another chance. That's all I got for you now. Sorry to be uh, less lighthearted and frivolous than usual, but the weight of the world is, is on me. I feel that the weight now and it's on all of us so we all need to get the word out that's the last point I'll leave you with the CNN MSNBC Fox News they're not gonna get Fox though has been doing better at the populist message than than the corporate media on the blue team but we we all need to work together to get the word out around the blockade and so Shows like this, and, and especially the people that I follow and, and quote on, on the Bernie or Bus show, they need to be heard. They need to be shared broadly 
until social media figures it out and then shuts them all down. They're already demonetizing different YouTube channels. Twitter just suspends accounts if people are saying things they don't like in a way they don't want to hear it. All of the Facebook, Facebook, I call it fascist book because of how pointedly um, oppositional they are to the kind of message that Bernie Sanders is bringing. The whole the whole machinery of the media is rigged. So do your part, get the word out, and we'll. <laughs> this, I hate that this tweet keeps getting likes as I'm as I'm watching it here. Yeah, please feel free to engage with with the people who are having this battle on Twitter. All right, that's all I got for you today. Have a great day.